All right, so picture this. You're building a website. Maybe it's for like your dog walking business right. or your latest tech project. Sure. And you need to display a list of your services or something. Where is that information stored? Mm. A database. Yeah. Today's deep dive, we're all about Squillite. <laughs> it's a database. It's probably powering way more devices than you realize. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's crazy. From your phone to like your smart TV, all this yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. We're going to unpack how to pull out the exact information you need okay. from a database quickly and efficiently. Make that website snappy. It's all about speed. And what's really cool about Scola is that it's lightweight. Right. You don't need like a big server to run it. And yeah. this makes it perfect for web development, apps, all sorts of things. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great kind of all around tool to have in your tool belt. It is. So to guide our deep dive today, we're using this really practical tutorial from plus2net.com. Okay. Think of it like a cookbook. Right. But instead of delicious meals, we're cooking up efficient ways to display data from a CKL8 database. Love it. I like that. Using PHP. Yeah. And Plus Two Net's great, by the way, because they have tons of code examples. Oh, yeah. They're very practical. Yeah. Really uh, good for visual learners. For sure. Now, before we get into the weeds, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. CCAL8, it's a database. Right. But you can think of it like a super organized digital filing cabinet. I like it. And PHP is like our trusty assistant. It's helping us communicate with this filing cabinet using a language that it understands. SQL. Exactly. Those SQL queries, it's like saying, hey, Scorelight, can you fetch me all the files right. labeled dog walking services from the drawer labeled services? Okay, so we have our little assistant running back and forth, grabbing files. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. But why not just pull everything from the database all at once? Why be so specific? Well, imagine like you're trying to find one specific document. Oh, yeah in a filing cabinet that's overflowing with papers. Right. It would just take forever, and no one wants to be waiting around for a website to load. It's all about speed. Right, totally. Especially if it's, you know, if you have a ton of information on your website. Yeah, huge. You're going to want to make sure that you are you know that it's loading as fast as possible. For sure. That's where these fetch techniques come in, right? Yeah. I saw in the Plus 2 Net tutorial, mm -hmm. they were talking about things like fetch asok, Fetch num. Yeah. There were like all these different options. It's like a menu of fetching options. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just about grabbing data. It's yeah. about grabbing it in the most efficient way possible. Think of it like you wouldn't use a fishing net to catch one specific fish, would you? No. You'd use a fishing rod with the right bait. So these different fetch methods are like choosing the right tool for the job. Okay. Okay. So each of these fetch options has a specific use. Yes. This is where I start to get a little lost. What's the difference? Like, why would I choose one over another? So think about it this way. PHP is kind of like our translator. Okay. It can understand that raw data from the database, but it needs to present it to us okay. in a way that we can easily read and work with. And these fetch methods determine how PHP structures that data. Okay. So it's about how the information is organized before we even see it. Exactly. On the website. Exactly. Okay. That makes more sense. So walk me through these fetch methods. What are like the most common ones? Okay. And why would I pick one over another? So a really common one is FTCH. Okay. And this fetches the data and presents it as an associative array. Okay. And like without getting too technical on that, it means you can access the data using the column names from your database table as keys. Okay. So it's really convenient for pulling out very specific information. So if I had a table like of dog walking services, right. and columns for like yeah. service name and price, mm -hmm. I could just easily grab the price for a specific service using that fetch a sec. Exactly. It's like um It's like a label maker. It's like a label maker, oh. yeah. You've got these labels and you can find exactly what you need instantly. Now let's say you want a super streamlined approach and you don't really need those handy column names. Okay. That's where face C H N U M, so that's the one that uses numbers instead of the names. Exactly. Fes C H N U M. It fetches the data and it gives you just a simple numerically indexed array. Okay. Super fast, super efficient. Great when you're working with those large data sets where milliseconds count. So it's like choosing between a map that has all the street names yeah. versus one that's like more minimalist and just has like grid coordinates. I love that analogy. That's perfect. Yeah, you can still get there. You'll get there. Yeah. But it might be faster depending on what you need. Exactly. And there are also a couple more fetch methods like 
fetch both, right. which gives you both the associative and the numerical arrays, oh, wow. and fetch EH OBJ, which formats the data as objects. Okay. These can be helpful in certain situations, but the core idea is still the same. You're choosing how PHP structures the data right. that it gets from the database. Okay, this is already making those lines of code seem a lot less cryptic. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Okay, so we've covered like the individual ways to fetch data. But what about when we want to grab a whole bunch of records? Right. Like we're building a page that lists all of our amazing podcast episodes. Okay. That's when we use Fetch All. That's where Fetch All comes in, yeah. It's yeah. like saying, Soul Greed, just give me everything in this table. Give me all the data. All the data. But even though we're fetching everything, we still need to think about how we want that data organized. Okay. It's like deciding, do you want to unpack all of your clothes into labeled drawers or just jump them on the bed? Oh, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even with fetch all, yeah. we still choose between fetch a sock, fetch gnome, all that stuff. You got it, exactly. Choosing the right fetch mode, even with fetch all, it's about setting yourself up for success later. Okay. Making your code, you know, as clear and easy to work with as possible. Got it. And plus two net has a really cool example mm -hmm. where they use fetch all to display a bunch of data in an HTML table. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. They basically build the table row by row right. using the data from the database. Yeah. It's really cool. It's like you know those time lapse videos where someone builds a Lego masterpiece? Right. Yeah, brick by brick. It's like that, yeah. Love it. And here's where it gets even cooler. You could use the same technique to build out all kinds of dynamic content on your website. Okay. Imagine like displaying a list of your recent blog posts or showcasing products in an online store or even like creating an interactive map all with data pulled straight from your database. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So we've seen how to fetch a single record. We've seen how to fetch everything. Right. What about those times where you just need one specific piece of information? Right. Like, say I want to know the name of, like, the most popular dog walking service. Okay. That's when I use fetch column. Fetch column, exactly. That's like a heat-seeking missile just for data. It just zeroes in on a single column and delivers just that. Nothing more, nothing less. Just what you need. Yeah. Super efficient. And in the tutorial, they use fetch column to build a drop down list of like classes from a student database. Right, right. Is that like a common use for fetch column? Yeah, absolutely. Think about any time you need to populate a drop down menu on a website, right? Like a list of categories or countries or even dog breeds, fetch column is perfect for that. So if I was like building a filter for my dog walking website, I could use fetch column to display a list of unique neighborhoods I serve exactly. in a drop-down menu. And what's even cooler is they use the SQL distinct command in that example, right. which is a little trick to make sure you're only getting the unique values, yeah. which is really helpful. You know, you don't want to drop down with like 50 options that all say golden retriever. You know? Right, exactly. So it's all about like optimizing those queries yeah. yes. to work smarter, not harder. Exactly. Now, before we wrap up our deep dive into Schoolite queries, there's one last concept I want to touch on briefly. Okay. It's a little more advanced, but it's important for anyone who's working with, you know, larger data sets. Okay. Squalite paging. Squat paging, yes. <laughs> I remember seeing that at the end of the tutorial. Mm -hmm. it sounded very intriguing. Yeah. But also a little mysterious. Yeah, yeah. So imagine for a second you have thousands, maybe even millions oh, I, I, of dog walking appointments in your database. That is a lot of dog walks. Right. Trying to load all of that information at once. My website would probably crash. <laughs> It'd be like trying to drink from a fire hose. Right. Too much. Way too much. Yeah. So school light paging helps us avoid that. It lets you break up those massive data sets they... into smaller, more manageable chunks oh. and only loads what you need when you need it. So instead of loading every single dog walking appointment, right. I could use paging to just show like appointments for the current week. Exactly. And then, you know, let people click to see other dates. Exactly. Exactly. Think of it like browsing a library, right? Okay. You don't need to see every single book at once. Right. You browse a section and then you browse another section. Mm -hmm. Paging is about making the information make sense for the user. So it's like creating a smoother experience yes. without sacrificing website performance. Exactly. And the best part is Plus2Net actually provides a downloadable script. Oh, awesome. That shows Squalite paging in action. So you can actually download it and play with it yourself. I love that they give you the tools <laughs> yeah. to implement this stuff. This has been really helpful, I feel like. I'm like demystifying Squalite queries. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. It's like we've like 
unlocked a secret level of website building. Yeah. We've gone from blindly grabbing data to like a surgically extracting what we need. That's a great way to put it, yeah. In the most efficient way possible. It's about working smarter, not harder. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. And like knowing what tools you have mm -hmm. to get the job done. So to recap our deep dive into school light queries, okay. we explored a bunch of different ways to fetch data from like snagging individual values with fetch column mm. to retrieving whole tables with fetch all. We even dipped our toes into like the ocean. Right. It is squall paging yes. for those massive data sets. It's a big ocean out there. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. But the key takeaway here is it's not just about getting the data. It's about getting it efficiently. Yes, exactly. And, and in a way that makes your code like elegant yes. and easy to work with. Absolutely. You don't want to be fighting your code. Yeah. We want it to be like as clean and organized as a like perfectly optimized there you go. SQL query. Exactly. So as you go out and like start building your own websites and apps and working with databases, right. think about what are the needs of your project? What's the best way to fetch that data, to display it? Are you working with a massive data set? Right. Maybe paging is the way to go. Right. And hey, maybe this has sparked your curiosity. Maybe you're wondering about the different ways mm. that you can like filter data using like where clauses. Sure. Or maybe you want to learn about more advanced SQL commands. Oh, yeah. There's a lot out there. There's a whole world. There is. It's a jungle out there. But hopefully this deep dive has given you like the compass there you go. to start exploring. And they love it. Well, on that note, this has been another great deep dive. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me.